boys and girls, students of Buddhist Sunday School, students of Dharma classes, Buddhist youths, parents, grandparents, and teachers of Sunday School and Dharma classes. May you all be well, happy, and peaceful. Now for this lesson, we are going to do a very important thing for all people, young and old. Now you know, all of us, whether you are young or middle age or old, want these three things. One, happiness. And then peace, mental peace, and success, right? Now, this presentation is directed to the young ones, maybe upper secondary, then the five, six, and then secondary, and then also pre university college students or university students and Buddhist youths, right? And I feel that this can help you a lot you know, from my experience dealing with the students. They want to be successful. They want to be happy and peaceful, less stress, but they do not know the methods of going about. They think that just putting in hours of study is sufficient, but yet they don't come up with the success that they want. So let us see. What are these 10 great bits of wise advice for students, All right? Now, I will launch the PowerPoint as usual, and then we go over one by one. Some of the things might be a bit more difficult directed at the secondary or pre-university students and the youth, but there might be some six students who are smart and they can understand. So let us now, Launch the PowerPoint. So now you see the cover slide. 10 great bits of wise advice. Right? Nasihat yang ada kebijaksanaan. Now, you can see, you know, here it shows the students, you know, studying. And then this how represents wisdom. It's very important to have wisdom so that you carry out the right ways in order to attain or to get happiness, peace, and success. Right? <laughs> this one, you see, a young graduate. Huh? Yeah, he is successful already because he uh, has followed the good ways to attain the success and happiness. All right. Now, the first of the 10 bits of wise advice is this. Be punctual. Don't procrastinate. Now, be punctual means to be on time for meetings, for appointments, right? For any uh, project that you are involved and you have agreed to come together at a certain time. So, we must be punctual. If you are not punctual, you are actually stealing people's time. And that is a bad reflection on you. Now, this one, don't procrastinate. That means don't postpone things. Don't put off things uh, that you need to do. You just keep on postponing. Now, that is not a good habit. And then at the last moment, you rush. The deadline is due. You have to hand in your homework or your project. And then, no, you only have a few more hours and you need to sleep. So you get all stressed out. And usually at the last moment, you might not give your, be uh, your best because you rush, isn't it? So successful people, less stress, are people who are punctual, right? They are very, very mindful of the time. And they don't do things at the last moment. They will plan and do things and finish with the task and move on to another task. So they say procrastination is the thief of time. Right? It wastes a lot of time. 
Now, let us see what some famous people have to say. It is difficult to prove yourself reliable when people are required to wait for you. Exactly. Let's say you are late for the class or you are late for an appointment and people wait for you. And if you are late for an interview, uh, too bad. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> your chance uh, of getting the job probably will be near zero already. You are creating a bad impression, isn't it? You're supposed to be present at a certain time and you are 5, 10, 15 minutes late. And, you know, some people give all sorts of excuses. They say, you know, traffic jam. I cannot help it. Well, what about other people? How is it that they also live around your area in the same town, passing through the same roads and they can be punctual? Knowing that there will be traffic jams, then they start off earlier. Now, these are the people, you know, who are wise and they know what to do. Last time I had more than 20 over years of community guidance classes, you call it tuition classes. Uh. So I always stress this to, be, to my students. I say very important must be punctual. And I, of course, have to be punctual. I tell them if I'm not punctual, that means something has happened seriously, really accident or maybe died already. <laughs> uh, I say, but of course, sometimes uh, you can't help it. I say, for example, uh, that day, your grandmother's birthday, and your grandmother requires you to sit with her for one or two hours, then, of course, uh, you have no choice. Uh, you have to be late. You know what I mean? Uh, right? Usually, people give up. Uh, uh, nonsense reasons. Uh. Or maybe, you know, you are riding, uh, I mean, you're, you're traveling in a car, all the four tires of your car also get punctured. Or things like that. <laughs> of course, sometimes you have very good reasons, uh, you can't help it, then of course you can be late. But most of the time, actually, can be avoided. It's just bad habit. Procrastination, postponing things, is one of the most common and deadliest of diseases. Deadliest means uh, most horrible or most terrible, most dangerous, right, of diseases. Diseases mean something not pleasant uh, and it will affect your success and also it will affect your happiness. So there's a price to pay if you keep postponing things. You know, sometimes uh, you mean to, you know, enter the competition and so on and you say, now mind, la, wait, la, wait, wait and then the contest is over. You could have Want it because you have the talent. You could be successful and you could be happy, but because of your bad habit of postponing, wait, la, wait, la, not yet, la, not yet. La. Last moment, then you rush and you can't give your best, isn't it? So never procrastinate. Given a project to do, then try to do it well ahead of time. Then you can move on to other things. And people who are like that, uh, are highly respected. People say, wow, this student, uh, he finishes on uh, well ahead of time, very reliable, right? and then he attends meeting punctually. He doesn't make people wait for him. So you can see that punctuality and procrastination, these two things you have to think about. This uh, is the cartoon strip. Uh. Have I not told you about punctuality? Uh, coming late, uh, so of course this, fella, uh, this animal is not happy. Uh. Huh? Oh, guess all waiting or what, you know. Be polite and well-mannered. Uh, today, it's sad to say, this is very lacking among especially the younger generation because they have not been trained or taught in school or at home. So, you know, not many students will wish uh, teachers when they see the teachers crossing their paths, right? And in the class, they have no choice uh, because uh, <laughs> the monitor will say, stand class <laughs> and good morning, sir, or things like that. But then uh, this has to be to come from the heart very naturally, well-mannered. And this uh, goes until the adult stage. I know because uh, when I go to certain places, like for example, the government offices or post office, for example, right? So of course, I take, I mean, I queue up. And then when I reach the counter, I will always make it a point to wish the person who is serving, who is at the counter, a Selamat uh, Pagi, Che, all this. Uh. And very often, uh, more often than that, or than what you can imagine, uh, they don't bother to say anything, not even a smile. They just look at you blankly or sometimes don't even bother. Uh, that is being very rude. 
people who wish you and you don't bother. Right? And very, very poor manners. You see? After the service, uh, of course, I would say, the Runaka say in check, never bother to acknowledge. Right? We, we know that if uh, somebody says thank you to you, you say you're welcome, isn't it? Right? Or not at all. Right? Or you can use Mandarin. Oh. So remember, if a person is trained from young to be polite and well-mannered, having good manners, uh, then you find you will grow up also to be polite, well-mannered, and you will be well-liked by different groups of people in society. In school, of course, you find that teachers also will notice his politeness and his good manners. And later on, when you go to university, the same thing. Lecturers or even the friends, uh, the cosmates will notice that he's a very polite person, you know. And then later on, when you work in companies, uh, of course, uh, I have taught so many students and they tell me that, you know, some get promoted not because they got the more, most A's, but because they have very good character. And one of it is being polite and well-mannered. So you see what these two people have to say, these two famous people, treat people or treat everyone politely, even those rude to you. If they are rude to you, you don't have to be rude to them as a revenge, right? So you just have to maybe keep quiet. So it shows on them that they are rude, isn't it? You can still be polite, right? If they scold you, you say, I'm very sorry, I am not guilty of the thing. So you explain, but you don't shout back, shout back at them and say nasty words just like they at them. So they will be the one, just like a person, uh, uh, you know, try to, you know, uh, throw a red hot piece of charcoal uh, so the hand get burned before they can throw. So, uh. so you will have to be polite. Even though the people may not be nice, but you are nice, isn't it? So you need uh, to be polite under all circumstances. Politeness is something you owe other people. right? Because when you show a little courtesy, a little manners, uh, uh, proper ethical behavior, then you find everything becomes easier and better. Like for example, when you need people to help, or later on in your company, right? You are interacting with many people, and if you are polite, uh, you find you can get things done easier and better. I say, uh, Mr. So and so, can you please help me? I am not very familiar with this, right? Some they don't know even basic words like please. I appreciate it if you can help me. You see. Can do this for me, ah? Can do this for me, ah? <laughs> you know, all this uh, shows up, right, in your character. Lah. So in time to come, people know ah, this person ah, is a very demanding, a very rude, impolite, right, uh, demanding person. And actually, you owe it to yourself because uh, if you can develop this quality of politeness, ah, then you are progressing in your character, isn't it? That's what you want, isn't it? To be somebody who is respected, who is admired, right? Who is appreciate, uh, appreciated. All these things. Uh, so you have to develop the character. And one of the things is politeness. That is important. And of course, things like thank you, please, uh, I'm sorry. All these are very important words of uh, social etiquette, uh, manners. Uh. Ah, this is one of the most important qualities. In the Buddhist scriptures, it's mentioned also. I listen to some Dhamma talks by monks. They say diligence is one of the most, if not the most important quality of a person in order to be successful in whatever he or she does. Now look at this very interesting quotation by Charles Dickens. I don't know whether you have heard of Charles Dickens. During our school days, even at Center 5, Center 6, we used to read the novels of Charles Dickens, the simplified version. And then, you know, when we went on to the secondary, we would read the original works, novels, like Great Expectations, 
Oliver Twist, one of the greatest British writers and novelists, right? Charles Dickens, Tale of Two Cities. Well, you should actually try to get to know all these things. You know. They're very important because they broaden your mind, your horizon. And then what did Charles Dickens say? But I never could have done what I have done without the habits of punctuality, order, and diligence. Now, he mentioned three qualities. The first one we have done, punctuality. Now, order would imply to be very organized, very systematic, uh, not karang kabut, huru hara. <laughs> no proper order, no plan, no timetable, uh, no uh, scheme of things. Just simply do lah, whatever comes to the mind, you can now be successful. You must be orderly, organized, systematic, plan things out neatly. But the third one is, you can say, the most important. If a person is not diligent, it's unlikely he can be successful in whatever he intends to do. And this also involves Dharma practice to be successful and become maybe eventually enlightened. We need the hard work, the effort in the practice. I think there you know, was one famous scientist, I don't know if I remember, it was Einstein who said the genius uh, is 99% sweat or perseverance and only 1% inspiration, something like that. Uh, right? That means, uh, why a person has become a, a genius is not due to his talent, you know. Yeah, a little bit, but most of the time it's due to his hard work, his perseverance, effort. So you have to bear in mind this. And talking about order, like planning the system, there's a very interesting quotation that goes something like this. If you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail, uh, to plan in an orderly manner. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Oh, you have to give it a thought, right? So that is diligence. Now, let us now go to the next one. Now, this one is a very, very important advice from the health point of view. Some People do not do well or do not achieve success in whatever they do, whether it's studying for examinations or to be involved in a piece of work in the company or to finish the project. They don't take care of their health. So if you don't take care of their health and you're sick, then you can definitely cannot, you definitely cannot achieve success with it. You be most of the time on bed or feeling so terrible because you are sick. Now, of course, sometimes you have taken all the precautions and still you get sick. It's quite natural, right? And sometimes it can't be how, but you have to be patient, you can see the doctor and so on. But very often it's because people also don't take care of their health. You know? And there are these few points I have listed here. Good nutrition, uh, like this uh, shows you balanced diet, uh, nowadays, so many young people take junk food. You know what is junk food? Lah? And they like to drink all those aerated drinks uh, which do not have nutritional value. They take a lot of all those uh, junk food uh, like popcorns, lah, snacks. Lah. They don't have really vitamins or minerals or good nutritional values. So remember that. For students, of course, uh, your parents will guide you. Lah. But even uh, some young adults, uh, they are not very careful on this. And then the other thing is exercise. As you can see the animation here. If you don't exercise, then you find that uh, you get into a lot of problems in terms of health. Your body functions will not proceed well. Your muscles, your nerves, your joints, all those things will not function properly. Huh? And you will feel terrible as time goes on. And today you find that uh, many young people really lack exercise. During our school days, it was compulsory. You have to go for sports practices, standard sports, and then games. You have to take out a few 
right? But nowadays, uh, you know, many don't exercise. I remember I told you about this joke. Huh? <laughs> there was this student, maybe uh, 13 or 14 or 15 years old. So he went to see the doctor because he used to feel sick. He was not very fit. Then the doctor checked, there's really nothing wrong with him in terms of the organs. La. You know, he's still young. So the doctor asked him, do you play games or not? Very important. He said, yes, doctor. I play games every day. The well, doctor said, oh, it's very good. How many hours do you spend playing games a day until the battery in my phone runs out? Look? Oh, that is the game he plays. Uh. Uh, all those games on the mobile phone, uh, he plays. Uh. That is stupid. <laughs> that doesn't give you exercise. You have to go jogging, walking, swimming, cycling, or badminton, or ping pong, whatever. Uh, but this is a joke, but it tells you a very good message. And then you must have enough rest, of course. There are students who are very hardworking, but they don't know that it's important to have good rest and hobbies, right? Relaxation also. Otherwise, uh, you can fall sick. And then some more, oh, some university students, wow, exams are near. So, wow, they study up to 2, 3 a.m., only one or two hours, not enough sleep. And then they try to drink five cups of black coffee. Oh, that is also stupid, right? Must have enough sleep. So you might say, ah, yeah, this is all common sense, but common sense is not so common. I've seen so many students are not following. So the Buddha himself advised this. What did the Buddha say? Hell is the greatest gift, the greatest present. Hell, I put it in red form. Huh? Contentment is the greatest wealth. Uh, contentment. It means you have tried your best already. Whatever comes, you are quite happy and accept it. Uh, not like very greedy and uh, see one thing more and more never end. Right? So this contentment, that means you must put in the effort, realize the potential. You have done your best already, then be contented. What more do you want? Uh, some uh, are not today, a lot of problems because people are not contented. They work very, very, very hard. Uh, after becoming a millionaire, they say, no, 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 I must try to become a billionaire. After having one car, they say, no, no, I must have three cars. Uh, this is not contentment already. This is maybe greed already, right? A trusted friend is the best relative. Of course, this is uh, another important point. A good friend who can be trusted. Uh, and then the highest happiness, bliss is happiness, is Nibbana. But today we are not talking on this topic. We are emphasizing on health here in this point number four. Uh. Now we come to the next one. Number five, be a responsible person. Ah, but Tangkong Jawab. There are some... Uh, People who are irresponsible say, okay, okay, I will do the thing. I will do the thing on time. I will finish it. They don't do the task. And then causing so much trouble, huh? giving a lot of problems to other people because they are not responsible. They did not carry, their, carry out their task well. They're supposed to carry out this. So if you are not responsible, then uh, in time to come, people know that you are an irresponsible person cannot be trusted. And then this will be a black mark on your character, isn't it? I noticed that the, uh, among the best students I've taught over 30, 40 years, uh, the excellent students are very responsible ones. They can focus, concentrate. They have many good qualities, uh, not just intelligence only. They have good qualities of the character. So being responsible, see what... Uh, the former president of the United States, uh, uh, Obama, uh, Barack Obama, uh, being responsible is an enormous, it's a very big, you know, privilege. Now, privilege means uh, a very special advantage. Uh, you know, people appoint you to do this. Uh, wow, you consider it, it as an honor, you know, a benefit, uh, uh, an advantage, a privilege, you know. So, if you carry out the task, with great responsibility, ah, this shows that you are one who is a mature human of very good character. And it marks a great human being, right? a responsible person. So it's a very, very important quality for success, right? for happiness and peace, all related. 
And then Winston Churchill, you know, the very great uh, prime minister of England during the Second World War, he says the price of greatness is responsibility. You look at the great people of history, they carry out their tasks, right? Their work with responsibilities, isn't it? Not leche, you know. Today, the word is a leche, you know. Many people are leche, they don't carry out the work with responsibility. Simply do lah. And some will still don't do lah. For God, for God. For God. Ah, that is terrible. So remember being responsible. Now, you see this image is very simple. She's a responsible girl. Maybe she's on duty or sometimes she's not on duty. Also, she volunteers and all. Very responsible to keep the room clean and so on. Today, you find very, very rare to find uh, students like this volunteer to keep the classroom clean, the compound of the association clean and so on. And this also a very responsible person to keep the environment clean. Ah, that is a very, very good sign. Some people think uh, the most important, get all the A's. Uh. You get all the A's, you don't have all these good qualities like responsibility and then uh, honesty, integrity. All these uh, people who don't respect you eventually. Uh, now, let us look at this now. It says, practice giving or generosity or charity, service. In Buddhist terms, we use the word dana. You know, this is a very important quality to develop, you know, not to be selfish, self-centered, uh, stingy, miserly. Uh, all these are uh, negative qualities. You know. Today, you have more uh, people uh, with negative qualities, uh, very selfish, self-centered. They think only of themselves. They will not volunteer to help. And then, um, you know, they wouldn't do much dana. They prefer to have the money to go and buy the latest iPhone or to buy things for their girlfriends or boyfriends. Huh? It's very sad, isn't it? So if you are able to practice this dana in so many ways, right, to help the poor or to serve, huh? like I find there are some students like in the Sunday school, very, very good. They will come earlier, and then uh, to help to clean uh, some of the classrooms and then uh, to empty the rubbish uh, dustbins, rubbish paper baskets, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, many, many types of work to water the plants and so on. Uh, that is giving and dana and is meritorious. So when you have all these good things done, uh, you are accumulating good karma, blessings, and good things will happen to you. You don't have all these blessings in time to come. You don't have any more good luck or what you call uh, uh, blessings. And then negative things some start coming to you already. Right? And then this very famous person, Jackson Brown said, remember that the happiest people are not those getting more, but those giving more. There's a saying that the more you give, the more you get. And some of the things you get, uh, money cannot buy, like, you know, create peace and happiness. People like you. They relate well to with you. You interact very well with people. And then uh, your name is good. Good name is, your good name is spread. And in uh, companies and so on, uh, wow, such people uh, who always help, always perform charity, and they get promoted, you know. Some very selfish one, self-centered. They will remain just the ordinary position. So remember that this is a very important quality, a tip or a advice of wisdom. In Buddhism, dana uh, is one of the very important qualities to develop. Uh, this person says that part of being a person is about helping others. Yes, you are not living on your own. You relate with other people. There is interdependence, interconnectedness. So, we are part of the whole network of people in the whole world, or you can say universe. So, we also need sometimes the help of other people. So, you find in time to come, if you are a very self-centered, selfish person, not really very helpful, the time will come where you need help and nobody would come to help you cause and effect, right? So that is an important point. Um, this is mindfulness and hatefulness. Uh, now, being mindful uh, uh, would mean 
and that you know you are alert you are awake and you know what you are doing you are aware sedar tentang apa yang terjadi many today are like zombies they don't know what is happening around them also i remember in buddhist association when i was giving the community classes i would put up the notices uh, uh forms for next years guidance classes out community class bimbingan uh, orang sudah keluar put up the notice already these people are not mindful of things uh, they are zombies you know they walk past the notice um, um ten times and still do not know uh, they will phone me i mentioned this before in an earlier talk uh, uh, they will phone me and then in the afternoon i'll get up from the short nap uh, say brother oh uh, the form for tuition out already or not i say yeah i have put up for a couple of weeks already you didn't see no uh, i didn't see ah uh. uh, you see lack of mindfulness so when we are not mindful then uh, a lot of problems to yourself and also to other people there were students uh, who were not mindful of how to fill the form properly and they leave out important things careless la uh. then as a result uh, they could not get into the class because too many students we have to pick you see right so some of them, the forms are not properly filled are incomplete also so you see you suffer consequences if you are not mindful uh, to remember uh, to do the things that ought to be done they are very sleepy like like zombies uh, uh, not awake not alert not attentive ah uh, as this very famous you know uh, he is a, what do you call it a psychologist uh, psychotherapist uh, very great qualifications a writer and so on john kabat-zinn uh, i read a few of his books uh, he says mindfulness means being awake the mind is very sharp alert awake he knows what is happening he knows what he's doing what happens in mind he knows what he's going to do he knows what he's doing he knows environment he knows so he's very alert you find some accidents happen on the roads because people are not mindful they are careless they are not attentive not awake so they knock into lamp posts uh, or they bang the you know the back of the rear of another car la, or they even knock down people la. all these uh, shows unmind unmindfulness and the other point of heedfulness heedfulness uh, to be heedful means to be careful to be cautious you see na ah so if we are not heedful is very dangerous you can meet with accidents you can get into trouble you do dangerous to be things because you are not careful you don't think with wisdom first we must think before we act these people who are not heedful they act and then after that regret because the actions they do not proper maybe bringing about accidents right or causing harm or flouting the law it means uh, breaking the law of the society and get nabbed like for example they are not equal you know when you ride a, a motorbike or so on you must have helmets lah and then the the lights of the of the head lights uh, must be on and so all these things are uh, many things uh, Now this uh, dharma quotation mindfulness is a part to real peace right we are always very mindful is very very good dharma practice you know then you find uh, your mind will acquire greater and greater peace whereas uh, if you are not mindful uh, the reverse uh, you will get the negative effects heedlessness carelessness uh, uh, heedlessness uh, will cause pain and disease not disease uh, disease means some trouble happening problems encountered because you are not careful now like for example you know that certain uh, hawker stalls are unhygienic they have uh, bacteria in the drinks and so on you are not cautious you are not careful you go and drink drink then you get diarrhea cholera whom to blame you are not cautious not mindful not hit pull la Ah, so that is the important thing. Yeah, it's actually training for this. I uh, call the mindfulness meditation. Ah, uh, in the meditation where you know the mind ah uh, tries to be mindful of all the things that are happening, 
Now, what comes to the mind, he knows and so on. But this one is another topic, lah, of mindfulness meditation. Now, let us look. Ah, this is also very important. Metta or loving kindness. So you find uh, the benefits are tremendous. I think I have presented, maybe for adults, uh, not for students, uh, about the importance of practicing meditation on metta or loving kindness. And also we discuss the 11 benefits the Buddha talked about. Now, if you're very interested, you can actually check the YouTube. You can go into my website. I have presented right a few posts on Meta, how to practice Meta meditation, all there. So if you are not sure, you want to ask me by WhatsApp or WhatsApp call or email, it's okay. Then I'll provide you the links for those who are keen. You can, of course, now I cannot answer you because it's virtual, it's not a Zoom or a Google Meet. Lah. So I see that there are other ways. Uh, if you are interested in you, how to learn this uh, meditation on loving kindness, uh, but, oh, can you give me the link? Uh, ah, then I can provide you with a YouTube link because otherwise you search us. Uh, sometimes you don't know how to search. Uh. So the Buddha himself said, uh, radiate, radiate means send out. Uh. Send out boundless. Boundless means unlimited. Uh, oh, fantastic love uh, towards the entire world, you know, above, below, and across, unhindered. And it means uh, unhindered means uh, continue without stopping, without any block, can go on without any difficulty. Also, the uh, idea of boundless, uh, unlimited. Uh, and no ill will, you know. You don't have anger, hatred towards anybody. You don't have enmity, feeling of revenge or anger or ill will or aversion or dislike. You know. It's all love, kindness, friendliness, goodwill. Ah, if you practice this metta, wow, you will get the benefits. Then you find things happening to you, a lot of benefits. So this is one important bit of wise advice. Not only for students, for all. Even some 60, 70, they have not learned it yet. It's still never too late, isn't it? So that is metta, ai, loving kindness. Young people, I think in Sunday school, you all do simple one by following the chant of metta. But without the chanting on the tape, and you can still do it as a method. So if you're very keen and you don't know how to do it and you want to learn, uh, you can contact me. Then I will provide you the link. Now it's so easy to send you a WhatsApp message or SMS or Facebook messaging, right? email, wow, so many methods. Huh? All right. Ah, this, uh, even young people can be trained to have what Acham Brahm says, quiet time. They found that in schools, uh, primary schools, you know, sometimes you know, so noisy and the children running in here and there, chasing one another, like cats and dogs, some jumping here and there, like monkeys. So uh, some uh, good students, they say, wow, well, very difficult. Uh, the mind very disturbed, are uh, not at peace, you know, cannot think clearly. Ah, so the school introduces every day. There's a certain amount of time, maybe 15 minutes. They have what we call quiet time, which actually means meditation. So they are taught uh, to meditate. Uh, just like this uh, family, the whole family also meditates together. Uh, to sit quietly, no music, no talking, everything, just silence. Just silence. Uh. And then they just watch the breath to know the breathing, breathing in. He knows the breath is going in. Breathing out. He knows the breath is going out. Breathing in. So he just follows like this. Huh? Wow, you find huh, the mind becomes more and more sturdy, calm and powerful. Uh, this is a training. So if you have the patience, right? To try and practice, then in time to come, uh, you know, uh, you will have a very powerful mind. And many things will work for you. You can concentrate better. You can remember better. 
right? And then your mind, uh, not like uh, go po, no, uh, panic, uh, worry, la. Uh, you find the mind improves. So this is a very good piece of wise advice, applicable to young people, middle age and old people also. Meditate. In other words, to make your mind still think, concentrate the mind, or very simple terms, have quiet time. And Ajahn Brahm gives this very interesting sentence. Meditation is like a gym in which you develop the powerful mental muscles of calm and insight. Now, you know what is a gym? Well, you have heard uh, of people going to fitness centers. Uh. Ah, they have the equipment uh, where you exercise or uh, lifting the weights uh, or maybe running on the treadmill. Uh, various gadgets and equipment there for you to but you have to pay on the not, all right? But actually, you can actually do it on your own. But then people, sometimes not disciplined enough, they need to go to the gym, it's okay. So you go to the gym, basically, is to have physical exercise to make your fitness better. Your physical fitness, actually, is an exercise for the body, all right? So going to the gym, physical exercise, sports, games, everything is for the body to be more healthy for your muscles, your nerves, uh, your bones, all sorts of things in your body uh, to make them function better. But meditation is different. It is taking care of your mind, taking care of your brain. So the meditation, uh, you just, just compare, uh, is just like the gym in a way, you know. Why? Because it trains your mental muscles. Your mental muscles will be your brain and the brain is connected to your mind. So it's training for your brain and mind so that you can be more calm, be more sturdy, right? And then more powerful and your wisdom can arise. Then you understand things better. Many good things happening uh, because you understand more and more things. And this is called insight, right? You understand more and more things already of the outside world as well as your, your mind. You understand? So you are capable of many things. An example of meditation is a metta bhavana, but this is the general meditation of watching your breath like this, right? Ah, number 10, we come to the, the last of the 10 bits of wise advice. And that is to practice morality. A person who is immoral, who doesn't practice morality and ethics, uh, oh, I tell you, uh, he or she will get into trouble. No, these people, you know, so many people have become criminals because they don't have moral values. They steal, they kill, they cheat, they lie. And then they become mambo. They take other people's wives. They rape. All sorts of things are because they have not developed morality. Good moral values huh? from the time they are young. Parents have to teach along the schools. But then the school nowadays concentrate more on uh, getting A's. Huh? So that's why we have our Sunday school, the Dharma classes. But now very, not many people go already because they cannot see the importance. They place importance in other things. Other things, of course, you do. But they forget this very important thing. And you realize it one day. You know, Albert Einstein said, only morality in our actions can give beauty and dignity to rise or to life. So in other words, a great scientist, one of the greatest scientists, Albert Einstein also said, is our moral action no, that can give us true beauty, no, where you have fantastic moral values. Your character is so good. No. Wow, you are really beautiful. But today, people think of beauty as external. Wow, very beautiful face. Ah. But that is external beauty. But when the blood goes all the blood can be as ugly as Pontiana. But if you have the morality, the good character inside you, from young and the old, you have the beauty. And not only that, you carry on to future lives. Also. Because you have good morality, you can have good reverse, 
right? So Einstein uh, made this very, very wise statement. And he gives dignity to life. Now, what is the word? What's the meaning of dignity? When a person has dignity, uh, it means uh, people can respect him. Uh, he is worthy of respect. No? He has a quality. Uh, uh, he has a quality of being worthy, you know, of honor. He's worthy of respect. So he has dignity. A person without dignity, I will do them some yeah, yeah. People say, I, yeah, you have no human dignity, man. You are a human being and yet you are doing all those terrible things. So who will respect you? Who will look up to you? You are not worthy of being respect or honor, isn't it? So you find that this morality is so important that Albert Einstein, you can say oh, one of the greatest scientists that ever lived, made this statement, you know. He did not say that being a millionaire. Uh, will make you very, very important. All, this, you know, and all those things are uh, crap talk, nonsense. Isn't it? And Plato, you know, a philosopher from Greece uh, that lived thousands of years ago, you know, he had that fantastic wisdom also when it comes to this issue of morality and virtue. He says, all the gold which is under or upon the earth is not enough to give in Exchange for virtue. The virtue will be the moral values, uh, the goodness, uh, the good qualities. Uh, opposite will be wise. Uh. Uh, so it's also morality. So he's comparing uh, all the goal uh, and your morality, which is more important. Your goal uh, all also cannot exchange for virtue because you know when you think deeper, when the person passes away. All the gold that he has, all the possessions, all the money, all the houses, all the land, all the cars, nothing he can bring with you. He can bring with him, isn't it? What he brings with him is his moral character, his virtues, his sila in, the, uh, in our Pali uh, Buddhism. Uh, and sila. So this is the important thing. The virtue, the morality, your good character, your values, your good states of mind, all this will follow you after you die. After we die, these are the things that follow us. Because they are of the things of the mind. Whereas the body, everything you know, will go off. Isn't it? So when you reflect on these two important quotations, then you realize, wow, very important. Uh, I must uh, practice uh, good moral values. And Buddhists, you know, must observe the five precepts. Uh, no stealing. I mean, the lay people. Uh, no stealing, no killing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, no using harsh speech or talk bad about other people's slander, no empty gossip, uh, empty talk, uh, frivolous talk. Uh. This one I've done many times already. But just to remind you important things. Now, you find that uh, you one very important bit of advice uh, is to guard the senses, as this image shows. Uh, you know, a lot of things uh, that we get in through our sense doors, uh, if you are not careful, uh, they can lead you astray and you do the immoral things. Like what you see with the eye, you see something already, uh, wow, your greed arises, wow, you know, you have so many pairs of shoes that you see another pair, $300, then uh, you want, right? You want that rebuild, I want that again. The greed, you know, and then some will still be pester the money and dig out the money from the parents, the poor parents suffering. So be careful. You know, the senses can make you go astray, you know, like the quality of greed can come out. And then you see something, you get angry, you want to fight. So what you see is good things, all right. But be careful. What you hear, oh, sometimes, uh, you hear all this kaba angin and then you, know, you go and spread you know, a rumor. Be careful of what you hear. And some people by hearing things also become greedy. Uh, they say, hey, uh, no, good lah, my mobile phone, the sound so bad one. I want a better uh, version of iPhone. Uh. And then some are, uh, oh, they even cheat and steal uh, to get more money. So you see what you hear. And then uh, uh, what you eat, what you speak, very careful also. Some people, huh, when they eat more and more and more, spend so much money, some people use this uh, speech, uh, you find, speaking all the terrible things. So through the sense, those are careful. And smelling also. You, know, you smell something, uh, 
Maybe, you know, the dog comes uh, to shit uh, near your area. Wow, you get so angry, you can kill the dog. <laughs> because you say the smell very, very bad. <laughs> so through your nose that uh, you are, uh, you can do a terrible thing also. And then through your body, uh, uh, your body, uh, uh, you find that, wow, I am very, very hot. Uh, how come uh, no aircon one? Uh? So you get very angry. Anger is a bad thing. Is it? I, I cannot give you too many examples. I have no time. Uh. And then, of course, the most important one is the mind. You know? It's the sixth sense. Uh. Here we have five. Uh. The mind, uh, you have to take care. right? Uh, when you have more wisdom arising, then you will know how important it is to practice morality. Uh. Now, actually, if you uh, look at even in ancient times, people talk about the very four important virtues, uh, the good things. Uh. Cardinal means the among the most important, the greatest importance or uh, the fundamental, uh, right? the basic, a uh, very important one in these, these four qualities. Wisdom, courage. Courage doesn't mean uh, to go and become a rampant. No. It's courage uh, to stand to the moral principles. Don't let people just bluff you or say that, no, 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 you have the courage. No, no, no. This is my good moral principle, courage. Self-restraint is uh, what we talked just now. Uh. Be careful of your senses, what you hear, what you see uh, what you taste or eat, what you speak on, what you smell, all those things are self-restrained. Be restrained, be controlled. Uh. You must be controlled. Uh, otherwise, uh, oh, you see this, you want, you hear that, you uh, want that gadget, and then uh, you want to eat all uh, expensive food. No control one, you know. And then, of course, also can come the sicknesses, uh, overeating. And then the other quality of the cardinal virtues is just this. Right, just this means to be very fair. So next time, maybe you know, when you work uh, in a company and so on, you may be having a high position, a manager. You must have justice. You must not, like, for example, be corrupted, uh, favor certain people. Then there's no justice. No, you're causing suffering to other people. Right, you don't have the justice. Uh, so justice uh, is a very important thing to be fair, and then don't go the crooked ways uh, because of your greed. Uh, so this is the, the point now. Uh. Now we come to the last slide, right? Now you find, uh, uh, I chose this animated wallpaper for the final slide. You know, the lights, everything all going up, right? You know, people usually associate, uh, oh, you know, you have good qualities, uh, you feel very light, uh, your heart feels happy, just like, you know, going to heaven. And people actually think uh, going to heaven, going up. Uh, whereas you feel very sad or guilty. All the negative qualities, your heart feels very heavy, like going down, you know. So I chose this uh, uh, to tell you about the goodness that we must have. Follow the wise advice. Then you'll be like going to heaven already. Right? Uh, that is the reason why uh, I chose this particular wallpaper, uh, animation. So may you have loving kindness, wisdom, and righteousness. These three points uh, are very important among the most important things uh, in Dharma, right? as well as in our life lessons. That means uh, we need these three things uh, in order to have good happiness, in order to have mental peace, right? We need these three things. Now, look at the first one. The first one is loving kindness. And you can also say metta. When a person is kind, he has metta, then uh, his character will be good. He has kindness. He has compassion. He has love. Huh? Ah, so this is a very, very important bit of advice. And then let's look at this one first, righteousness. I chose righteousness to rhyme with kindness. Righteousness actually just means morality. <laughs> uh, to have the moral values, uh, the good qualities. Uh. So you see, the practice of Dhamma it doesn't mean uh, going to pray to Buddha Kuan Yin. One of the important things in Dhamma practice is to better our character. To change our character from bad to good, or maybe you know, from not so good to better and better until uh, you reach 
the highest point. Uh, uh, perfect character. Uh. But okay, if you have perfect character and perfect wisdom, uh, then you'll be a Buddha already. Right? <laughs> so this uh, righteousness is also an important quality to develop. So it's definitely one of the very important ones under the 10 bits of wise advice. All right? So try to be righteous, to have moral qualities, to practice metta, to have kindness to yourself and all other beings. And this one is the most important. Huh? The wisdom. Now, wisdom is very difficult to define. When a person is wise, he knows what should be done, what is good, what is not good. And he knows how to avoid all those things that will bring dukkha, suffering. And he knows the steps that he should take in order to attain the happiness, the peace, and the freedom of the mind. When he has the wisdom there, he will cut all those terrible evil forces, no, Mara forces, no. not the devil inside, no, but actually the poisonous things, are poisonous in the sense that they are harmful states. No. Three of the most important, you know, greed, hatred, delusion. And you have other associated ones, no. jealousy, no, anger, no, aversion, no, ill will, no. many others, but this Summarize these three things, great hatred, delusion. From there, if you are able to cut these three more and more, then your happiness and peace will begin to grow and grow and grow. Until one day, you too become a Buddha. And you will not be in the suffering world anymore. Ah. So this presentation is a very important thing from the Dharma point of view, as well as also to help you to be happy, peaceful, and successful as you grow up into the adult world. Before we say sadhu three times, I would like to thank all of you, right, the students, different levels, all students, and also the youths, and the parents and grandparents who are guiding the young people. And then, of course, the teachers, all the teachers, right? So thank you very much. I do appreciate all the support. If you all don't, uh, nobody <laughs> watches any of this, uh, then in time to kind of will stop the presentation. So as long as there is one, then I'll still do it, do it uh, unless nobody views at all. Uh, now I see that uh, you have a certain number, uh, okay. Uh, so let us say sadhu three times, all right, together. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May you all be well, happy, peaceful, and healthy. Take care.